Hello, I'm John Powell, and I'm here to show a device that was developed by Domus Trend from Young Monkey. Uh, one of the main reasons for this was my background as a network TV, uh, the switchers, all the effects and everything that I would trigger at a, a nanosecond's notice. Uh, the bigger switchers could handle with the eMEMS and the memory. Uh, basically, having a, w a way to call up a snapshot of the panel uh, at its current state at a split second. That's basically what an EMEM is. And in particular the new tech equipment didn't have any type of that, that, that device. But since webcasting has really taken off and people like Turner Sports, ESPN3, the Horizon League are using all this gear, uh, it's a fantastic uh, invention and uh, I, I would like to show you a few things why I think it's very important to have. As you can see behind me is a 850 CS. I have an 850 interface here and for these purposes I have a program monitor. Now <clears throat> the, uh, the coolest thing about this is uh, with the, the touchscreen panel here I have a layout here for this particular project this project was for ESPN3 for the American Legion World Series <clears throat> and uh, they had a requirement that they wanted to have a clip play uh, with an alpha channel reveal we call it going to commercial break and out of commercial break well the capability exists in the TriCaster however you there's no way to get it up quick enough and I'll explain as you can see the color bars here imagine if that was a camera you'll see the animation fly off <clears throat> that was out of clip store 2 in the TriCaster and this commercial is in uh, clip store 1 or DDR1 and as you can see in the program preview monitor up here it's already loading my one clip store so when I come back the animation is already set up so now I can focus on other things on my camera I want to go to or if I want to talk to talent on the intercom system it's basically cruise control through the brakes all I have to worry about is what source I want to come back to so I'm going to hit still which is color bars and you will see an opening animation cue and play you'll even see the panel if I slide back slightly be automated you'll see the different keyers and everything come on at the end of this here so basically this automates the process now here comes the opening animation opening animation there'll be a reveal my panel comes on and it reveals right to color bars uh, that effect that is basically the stars going across has three frames of video to do the undercut under. So, in another example, I can do my stat setup, and I can do a wipe in. You will see that as the animation wipes in, now it's playing a clip out of the one of the DDRs, and I have a graphic over top of it. So I just select which camera I want to come out to, and stats out. And as we know, the pace of sports, it's, it's extremely high paced and quick that uh, we can set up effects like that. The big thing is replay. The TriCaster 850, the non-extreme models do not have a transition builder. So there's a way to also do that out of the, the clip store. Now in the TriCaster interface you will see these little bins. We've assigned different clips to these bins. So right now this is the star animation loaded up. So if I go to my replay standby you'll see the replay in effect has been loaded and then I can go to either we have two channels of replay here or two channels of play out for the replay here so I can wipe the animation in to the replay which its replay machine isn't hooked up but if I want to come back out to something it'll load a different effect out so when I hit that it'll come back to what's ever on camera now I'm going to show you if you did this effect manually you would assign the, the clip into your clip store and assign it to DSK2. I can trigger DSK2, alright, but notice if I'm not quick to cut behind it, it's going to go to the same source. So right now I would have to 
think quickly about going to whatever replay source I'm going to so I could fire this manually and undercut and go to my replay. However, that's a pretty lengthy clip. On the replay out effect that we're using is the star wipe. And if you can see here, as it plays across, you only have three frames of video to undercut. So if I try to do this manually, we'll see if I can do it cleanly. See, it then becomes quite sloppy. So as you can see, if you want to go to replay cleanly every time without error, you can set up your replay effect, fire the replay in, and then your replay out, and it's exact every time. One really cool thing about the macro panel, it is a touch screen. Uh, along the bottom here is a set of rows, so I, as long as I go into other modes of this, notice my bottom row always stays there which is I keep my critical stuff in there because we can all you can always go to replay <clears throat> or you need to check the audio or whatever if I hit the audio tab obviously I brings up my audio tabs without grabbing a mouse my DDR tab knows the DDR tabs I can mute and unmute my audio channels and then my replay sources are here so I can hit my replay standby to load a clip and either the two channels, A or B or red or blue, depending on the director. So I can do the replay in and then replay out back to whatever's on camera. So basically this panel layout here was the project that I used for uh, the, the 15 or 20 baseball games that we shot. Uh, this had all the commercial breaks here. Again, this is all user definable, but my setup had all the commercial breaks here. The ones in blue meant that there wasn't a lower third keyed on them when we went to break. The, yellow, the orange ones meant that I had a final score up and then went to break with that animation that you saw flying across. A couple of the other elements that were here was the show start. So we could actually fade the black for the start of the show. I'd hit show start. You'll see another icon up and says show open so I'll accidentally bump that. I hit the show open. It's all automated. I just pick which camera I'm coming to. Again, I'm going to use the title since there's no camera hooked up. And then we would go to a live shot and, uh, and we'd cue the announcers. What's really cool is once you use this and it's all automated, you can you can have everything set up and it's all automated. Now if we were going to go to the end of the show and the talent were on the air and you wanted to do the reveal back out going to going to the end of the show, there is a show end button. You hit the show end button and now a show close comes up. Another uh, anti-accident feature. So I hit show close. You'll see the animation roll again. And there we are sitting in black right to master control. Basically, this, this, this makes complex things very simple. You just pre-program it into the menu and, and the way you go. Completely user-definable, controls every aspect of the TriCaster um, and live text itself. So it's, it's, I don't do a show without it. I think it's a, a fantastic product.